Hello, my name is David Navarez, and we'll be doing a presentation over Myra Escher Levine's conservation theory. Uh, three overriding concepts uh, to really understand the theory well is the concept of conservation, which is uh, the patient's uh, ability uh, to, to conserve um, energy uh, in a way that is beneficial to their health in terms of recovery. So we want to make sure that energy output uh, is not greater than energy input, uh, conserving, and that we as nurses are implementing uh, interventions alongside their participation to conserve uh, their, their energy in a way that promotes uh, wholeness and recovery. Adaptation is the patient's ability to adapt to their environment, both internal and external. Uh, usually when uh, people are sick, they have the ability to uh, physiologically adapt, uh, whether it be the flu or uh, some minor um, bacteria or virus. Uh, but at a certain point, they get to the, to the extent to where they can't do it on their own and they need to come in to help. So we as nurses are there to help them uh, along their adaptation process to achieve a state of wholeness. Uh, wholeness, we hope to achieve this, which is a state of uh, recovered health and not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, uh, with social uh, relationships and things that they do socially still intact. And those three concepts are kind of what overrides everything. Biographically, uh, she lived 75 years. She was born in the city of Chicago on December 20th, 1920, and died March 20th, 1996. She had a, a Jewish heritage. Uh, she did face anti-Semitism growing up, but that did not deter her at one bit. She got her degree in biology at Cook County Hospital School of Nursing in 1944 and later got her master's degree at Wayne State. Uh, she had many uh, roles as a nurse, uh, from a military nurse to professor and author. Uh, and author-wise, she wrote a book called Introduction to Clinical Nursing, which won the American Journal Nursing Book of the Year in 1969. And she is most notably known as a professor who worked at the University of Illinois, Loyola University, Rush University, Tel Aviv University, and Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. In the midst of her church teaching career, um, she, she was teaching at the University of Illinois, and she accidentally created the conservation theory uh, she was hoping to, to educate and create good nurses and how they should approach uh, decision-making in each patient. And she wound it up um, creating a theory that, that to, her, to her knowledge, was never really a goal, but it ended up happening uh, either way with the level of, um, of exactness, of, of passion, of, of desire to create uh, prepared and equipped nurses to handle each patient uh, with the same thought process, but that would promote wholeness of each individual uh, across the across the board. Conservational model uh, promotes four core principles: energy conservation, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity. Outcome is to promote patient adaptation uh, and return to a state of wholeness while preventing excess fatigue. And we're going to go more into depth on each one of these. So, energy conservation: uh, the ability to make sure that patients are getting adequate nutrition, adequate rest and still uh, practicing uh, adequate exercise, physical therapy, all types of exercises that they might need to do and movements that they might need to do to uh, promote uh, their health and recover. Uh, but we wanna spend uh, careful attention uh, monitoring input or intake and output, uh, electrolyte values, albumin levels, and making sure that if they do need, you know, IV fluids, parenteral nutrition, that we're communicating these concerns with the physician and uh, getting them addressed appropriately to make sure that uh, energy is being conserved and excessive fatigue is not occurring. Conservation of structural integrity. Uh, this can be of the whole person or it can be a specific part of the person, like the skin. Um, as in this example of the mobile elderly patient, uh, we want to make sure we're doing personal hygiene, range of motion exercises, turning every two hours at least, patting bony prominences, prominences to make sure that the structure of the person is uh, improving and not deteriorating anymore. And this can be specific to uh, whatever the concern or need is of the person. And our goal is to maintain physical and structure, structural integrity of body. Conservation of personal integrity, uh, this goes uh, along the lines of uh, respect, independence, self-determination, recognition. Uh, as nurses, we need to recognize their needs, patient efforts, and encourage them to do as much for themselves as they can. Uh, this means assisting when needed, allowing them to, to do what they can on their own, not overstepping boundaries, providing privacy, respecting their autonomy, their uh, ability to make decisions about their health care, to be informed about their health care, uh, so that they can feel respected, acknowledged, and still in control 
uh, to of, of some extent of what's going on around them. And then conservation of social integrity deals with uh, relationships, religion, culture, uh, school, work, uh, our identity as a person and the things that we do. Uh, we need to recognize that we function within social settings and that these are important to maintain intact, uh, helping them call family and friends, uh, teaching about visiting hours, encouraging uh, practicing of religion, allowing them and helping them to you know, keep doing schoolwork if they're there long term, and making sure that we're conserving uh, these social networks and these, this aspect of their life because it motivates and encourages them and gives them the strength to continue on in their healing process. So this model was implemented in the care of preterm infants. It was used uh, to see if it was beneficial, if it was useful. And they took into account the four principles, energy conservation. They measured uh, the child's uh, use, need for surfactant, uh, their need for supplemental oxygen, uh, their ability to oxygenate and ventilate. And they applied uh, tactics such as, you know, providing this oxygenation, uh, reducing energy needs, uh, clustering cares, uh, using warmers, uh, doing what we, they could to keep the energy low. And for structural integrity, they measured weight gain and gestational age, both at beginning and at uh, discharge. Uh, they were making sure that uh, weight gain was, was appropriately occurring, which means being diligent over feedings, the ability to feed orally, or the need to use parenteral or enteral nutrition and fluids, personal integrity. They were using the APGAR scoring, measuring a neurogenic development, and making sure that it was increasing or improving uh, appropriately. And then social integrity was primarily focused on the family system, mom and dad, and those involved in how they endured this crisis-like situation because it, it is it's a different uh, type of birth not necessarily considered um, a normal one but still not also one that has to be bad it's just more challenging and there's more steps away along the way and more diligent care that needs to be done in order to ensure that the baby can go home safely so in conclusion they found that implementation of lean's conservation model was consistent with aiding and achieving physiologic integrity and reduction in the age at which the infant and family were able to discharge. And one of the key factors they found was consistency in the health care and nursing care uh, as a key supporting factor for, for this outcome. This is due to the ability um, to adapt to the infant and family's unique needs and to have that uh, rapport and understand them a little better. But they did find that the conservation model was uh, well applicated to the scenario and was beneficial. Uh, another scenario is application of care of cervical cancer patients. So Debbie, a 29-year-old, recently diagnosed cervical cancer, had a radical hysterectomy, history of smoking, lost 20 pounds, married with two kids, and a husband who is unemployed and distant. So primary concerns are pain, bladder retention, nausea, and infection. So for energy conservation, we want to make sure we're getting them uh, connected with a dietitian, registered dietitian, to help with uh, dietary uh, changes and intake to to increase that and regain those 20 pounds or be at a, at a healthy weight uh, to do, give foods that relieve nausea. And we can do our end by making sure we're giving antiemetics and teaching how to take antiemetics properly when going home. For structural integrity, we were focused or we could be focused on things such as the surgical incision site. I feel like that's a primary concern here, making sure that it's not getting infected, that their patient knows how to look for warmth, redness, fever onset, tenderness, signs of infection, and that we are teaching them how to take their antibiotics appropriately because most likely they will be going home with those as well. Uh, bladder retention was a concern in this scenario, so we want to make sure that we teach them how to self-cath if that's appropriate and that they know how to do it in a way that uh, promotes clean uh, clean processing so that no infection is given and started. Personal integrity, we want to make sure we're speaking to uh, the mother and making sure that her adjustment to life of not long longer being able to bear kids uh, is something that she might not be easily dealing with, but something that is uh, being dealt with appropriately. And then if she needs help with extra resources or mental health resources, that we're able to get her connected to those appropriately. And then social integrity, exploring the family system, its ability to sustain a home without a mother who is fully fit to maybe do the same responsibilities that she was and needing more rest. Uh, if they need contact with resources such as food banks or support groups, we'll do that as well. Contacting religious resources, if that's a need for them as well, would be something that we would do here. And then question, uh, for each of the four key principles of Lean's conservation theory, what nursing interventions should be or, worth, or are worth implementing? A 70-year-old male stroke patient who fell and fractured the left side of his hip uh, difficulty speaking, swallowing, husband, father of three, 
faithful Catholic church member and part of a jazz band for 20 years. So what would be uh, things that you would implement with the four core principles uh, that are implemented in this model, uh, being uh, energy conservation, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity? Next question is, is this theory one that you will realistically apply in nursing practice? And if so, why or why not? I'm curious. I think it's something that's very valuable. It kind of encompasses holistic healthcare and something that I found very valuable, but I'm interested to see what um, your opinions are on this and if it's something that you realistically think that you would apply and could apply to each of your patients. In conclusion, um, this theory was accidentally discovered, which I found fascinating and really made me think that like passion is the key to developing um, many, many ideas, theories, practices that could really be impactful to nursing and to people for years to come. I mean, the theory was created many, many years ago in the 1900s. I don't remember exactly the date where it came out, but it's still being used today. It's still influence, uh, influencing practice today, and it's still uh, effective today. I would definitely, definitely say that. So I think uh, making sure that we are passionate with what we do uh, about the patients we take care of, what we can do to improve our practice is something that uh, Myra Escher Levine is promotes through her life and through the work that she's done. And uh, it was it was an honor to get to learn more about this. Here are just a few of the references that I that I used, and if you guys want to go look at them, you are more than welcome to. But thank you for this uh, this time that you guys took to listen to this, and I appreciate uh, your uh, the, your diligence in listening. Thank you.